Alright, thanks for watching and today we would like to do something really, really, really cool. It has to do with linear algebra. Namely, consider the following system. AX plus BY and CX plus DY equals E and equals F. So AX plus BY equals E, CX plus DY equals F. And I like to call it the Abbey system because <laughs> when, when I wanted to publish this video, I wanted to put the title AX plus BY and my iPhone auto-corrected it to Abbey. And I was like, this is kind of cute. So <laughs> let's just call it like that. And here, what's our goal? We don't want to quite solve it. I want to do something slightly easier. Namely, I want to answer the question, for which, for which A, B, C, D, does this have exactly one solution? This have a unique solution. And sort of my goal with this video is simply to say when does an equation have at least one solution and when does it have at most one solution. And of course, if you know the determinant, then you know the answer, but let's pretend we don't know what a determinant is. So, all right, how did we do this? Let's forget about X and Y. Let's write it in matrix form. So in matrix form, it just becomes A, B, D, C, D, and E, F. All right. The first thing we would like to do, we would like to divide by A to do the rho echelon form. But the problem is A might not be zero. And because it depends on the case whether A is zero or not, let's do argue in terms of cases. So case one, let's assume the happy case. A is actually non-zero. And interestingly, it'll give you sort of the same answer at the end. Then, well, if A is non-zero, we can actually divide by A. So dividing by A, we get 1, B over A, and then E over A, and C, D, and F. And then let's continue. We want to get rid of this C, so let's add C times, I guess, or let's subtract C times the first row from the second row. And by the way, that's also valid if C is zero, so you wouldn't do anything in this case. And then you get one B over A, again, still E over A, E A spot to the game. And then, <laughs> This C becomes, you know, minus C plus C, which is zero, just what we wanted. And this becomes minus BC over A with this D. So D minus BC over A. And here F, press F to pay respects. Uh, F minus EC over A. That's good. Let's put it on a common denominator. Why not? And we get the following, still one. And then here's one thing, so uh, strictly speaking, not necessary for the row echelon form, but to just make things pretty, let's just multiply all sides by A. And it's okay because A is non-zero. Because again, our goal is not to solve the system, but to figure out when this has a, has a unique solution. So then we get A, again back to, um, I guess, um, sorry, A and then B and E. And zero, AD minus BC and AF minus EC. Okay. Now, A, we know it's non-zero. So this is already a pivot. So it turns out, of course, the question is whether it has a solution or not. Well, it depends on the value of AD minus BC. All right. Now, if AD 
minus BC is non-zero, then it turns out there is exactly one solution. And let me explain you why. The question is, when does there even exist a solution? And this, and sort of, a solution does not exist if you have a row of the form zero, zero, something else. Well, if AD minus BC is non-zero, then you cannot have a row of the form zero, zero, something else because this A is non-zero. And same thing here. If this is non-zero, you don't have a row of the form zero, zero, something else. So let me, let me write that down. In other words, pivot in every row means there is at least one solution. Now, there could be more than one, strictly speaking. But this is not what the columns tell us. So in the columns where there are no pivots, there is a free variable, which means either a solution doesn't exist or there are infinitely many solutions. Well, how many columns are there in the coefficient matrix with no pivots? Well, none of them, because in this case we have two pivots. So, in particular, a pivot in every column, this means there cannot be infinitely many solutions because there are no free variables. And this could mean zero or one solutions. So it still could be that it's not consistent. And if AD minus BC is non-zero, then we do have a pivot in every row and a pivot in every column. So combining those two things, we get exactly one. Or if I like to say, instead of exactly one, we have one greater than or equal to one. And it sort of, there was this, this I think, Drake meme that was like, ah, oh, I hate this equality sign, Ugh. but greater than, less than, yeah. <laughs> okay, so if AD minus BC is non-zero, we have exactly one solution. But the question is, um, what if AD minus BC is non-zero? Well, there could still be at least one solution, given that, um, you know, if this is zero, we would have a row of zeros, and then there still exists a solution. But still, it doesn't mean we have exactly one solution, because suppose a solution exists. If this is non-zero, this would be a pivot, uh, free variable column which means that even if a solution existed, in that case, we would have infinitely many solutions uh, or zero solutions if a solution doesn't exist. So a, AD minus BC equals zero, that would mean free variable. Which means in case one, where A is not zero, the condition to have exactly one solution is AD minus BC is non-zero. Now, let's figure out what happens in the second case, if A is zero. Well, then your matrix looks like zero, BE, and CDF cumulative distribution function, no, uh, wrong, uh, wrong, cla wrong class, I guess, or wrong video. So then interchanging it, again, we want to do row echelon form, we get CDF and then zero BE. Okay, and again, we need to argue, you know, in terms of pivots or not, but the problem is, uh, some of those or all of those could be zero. So let's again do a subcase. Well, if, and let's sort of argue in terms of B, and you'll see why. Well, if B equals zero, turns out we're similar back to this case. Well, if B is zero, there could still be a solution 
But if it's zero, the second column would be a free variable column. So there could either be no solution or infinitely many solutions. So that's why we still have basically not the case that there's a unique solution. So free variable or no solution. But the cool thing is we don't really need to treat this separately because if b is 0 and a is 0, we would still get ad minus bc is 0. It's sort of included in that case, so we don't need to consider this separately. And well, now let's argue if b is not 0. Well, then what we get is C, D, F, 0, B, E. Well, if B is non-zero, then this is a pivot. And basically, we need C to be non-zero. Here's why. Because, well, if C is non-zero, then we're good. C becomes a pivot, and we have a pivot in every row and a pivot in every column, which means there's a unique solution. If C is zero, then we we'll get something which from zero, zero, D, B, and then F, E. And there would be a free variable here. Which means there might either be no solution or infinitely many solutions. So that's why we need CD non-zero. We need C to be non-zero. But the cool thing is, well, it turns out this is also a case we don't need to worry about because then AD minus BC, remember A was zero in case two. Well, then this becomes zero and we get minus bc. Well, if b is non-zero and c is non-zero, and I think it's called integral domain or something, then the product is non-zero. So we still get ad minus bc is non-zero, and therefore our final condition is simply ad minus bc is non-zero. And it turns out in this case, you do have a unique solution. So let me just tell you what it is. So A, B, C, D, let's so X, Y equals to E, F. Well, in another video, I'll teach you how to invert a matrix. But if you invert that, you simply get the following. You get that X, Y is A, B, C, D inverse of E, F. And well, turns out this inverse involves this factor AD minus BC, which is called the determinant. So we're basically shown if the determinant is non-zero for a two by two matrix, then we have a unique solution, else it does not have a unique solution. So either infinitely many solutions or no solutions, and then we get D minus B minus C A, and then E F, and you can calculate that. This then becomes, I guess, uh, let's see. Uh, so DE minus BF over AD minus BC. And uh, minus, so basically AF minus CE. And then AD minus BC. So indeed, nicely, you know, the math actually works. If AD minus BC is non-zero, here is your unique solution. All right, I hope you enjoyed this Abbey extravaganza. If you want to see more linear algebra and more math, please click like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.